Hey guys, we're going to start a little early tonight with our uh, Q&A with um, Chrissy here from Transplant. So I just wanted to say hi and good evening. Hope you guys had a great day. Hi, Chrissy. Hi. How was your day at work? Good. It was busy. It was my Friday. So, you know, by the end of your shift, you just sound like a blubbering idiot. So, but it's good. Good. Well, I thank you for giving us some of your time um, after shift, especially after your Friday. Um, I don't know how many people will view live. This is, we've never done a um, one in the evening like this. So hopefully this will be a good time for people. And if it's not, then people will catch it on the replay. So uh, how long have you been with transplant services and specifically speaking, you, you, your unit just does kidneys, right? Yes. Okay. So it's kidney transplant um, and just to make it known to a lot of people, it's not as in depth as say heart. Um, it's an example I speak to other people about saying, you know, we with kidneys, we, all, we have two, right? So if one fails, we're good. We're not um, completely, um, you know, out, out of the way. Um, but uh, I have been on the kidney transplant for at UNMH. Um, we refer to this itself. But um, I've been there two years, my entire actual nursing career. It's where I precepted. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, it's a really, really good floor. Um, it's very... <laughs> very accepting, um, very um, easy to learn type of floor, but yeah. Okay. Go ahead, did you have something else? No, I was just saying, just kind of reiterate. <laughs> okay, good. I'm turning my volume down on my phone so I can actually see the comments come through, sorry. It gets a little distracting, there we go. Okay, um, let's see. So what did you do? Oh, you said that you started there. So that's where you did your nurse residency. Did you try any other units during your residency? Um, I did actually. I, I precepted um, down at Neuro ICU for a little bit, um, okay. and then I ultimately, due to unfortunate circumstances, um, went back to Six South. But um, it's it's a good floor. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. I'm glad you like it there. Um, I do mention though. So when you're actually precepting, um, you can't actually care for the kidney transplant patients. They are um, a special. Um, type of patient. So for us on our floor, it's transplant and surgical oncology. So we have two type of patients. So when you when you first start out, but that we'll go into that in further questions. But okay, um, okay, good. <laughs> so is it? Do you feel like this is a good place for a new grad to start overall? Absolutely, um, especially because the staff on this floor is super amazing. I say that all the time. Um, really great staff. Um, but also, if you're looking to start out into transplant, I think it is a good floor just because the acuity of the patients isn't so severe. So it kind of gives you an idea. I mean, we have a special team that we have to work with, a transplant team. So you, it's like a you know small baby step into transplant. So if it's something that you're really, really interested in um, and eventually want to move into something, like I said, higher acuity, like cardiac or something, then um, I definitely think it's a good place to start for sure. That's great. That's awesome. Nice start for new grads. That's awesome to hear. Um, so what advice do you have for a nursing student that would help make them a good nurse? Oh, sorry. So this question was entered by a student. Mm -hmm. And essentially what I gathered from it um, was that she's actually just wanting your take as an experienced nurse. Uh, anything not necessarily transplant related, but anything that would make them a good nurse. And she says perhaps something not taught in school or is taught in school, but not taught in a real world application. Yeah. Um, as far as good nurse, I would say it's always good to be able to show on paper what you can do. So I know it's something that UMH is implementing, but um, something I've done from previous jobs before, but having like your cap portfolio, I know you said you used to work there for a little bit, but um, anything that you can show on paper works really good. Um, I would say sometimes too, because we're so caught up with learning the material nursing school, I think sometimes we really have to, you know, sit back and, you know, keep in mind why these patients are here and that they are in a vulnerable state. So I just, sometimes, you know, you catch yourself being, you know, like, you know, this person's asking for too much, you know, and they may be like a homeless person or whatever, but you have to remind yourself that this is, you know, a moment that they're actually able to eat a full meal or something. So just really having that compassion, you know, even though you're stressed out. Um, yeah. And then for me too, I just, I really think volunteering is a really, really great thing. So if you can volunteer, I really think that that sets you apart too. And as you know, professionally and personally, so. 
That's awesome. Yes, I agree. Uh, so how is the experience in terms of when you started on your unit as a transplant uh, on the transplant unit and then any insight or advice? Um, for first starting out, um, it's just it's really been kind of a roller coaster. Um, I would just say take it with stride um, because the big thing is too. So in the state of New Mexico, we only do like 30 to 40 transplants. So it really isn't a lot. Um, a so year. They are, say, say it again. A year, 30 to 40 a year. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so um, we don't see too many. And so we kind of want to spread the wealth, right, for um, everybody to have a transplant, um, whether it's a new transplant or somebody that's um, uh, unfortunately having a rejection issue. Um, but so – you know, it's not like an, a normal nursing duty where we get to like do it so much more to where you can like continue to learn from that experience. You just really got to take it in on that one time that you get it. And okay. then sometimes it's feast or famine too. Like I feel like I hadn't had a kidney transplant patient for the longest time. And then I had two my past three days. So it's just been really weird in that sense. But um, just take in that opportunity that you can when you are there, um, when you do get the kidney transplant patient or, you know, even – if you do know somebody that has a transplant patient, like ask them if you can butt in and, you know, help administer a medication or, you know, do vitals while they're at least, you know, administering the medication or something just so you can be a part of it. Because like I said, it just happens very, uh, very few and far between. Sure. So you mentioned um, earlier, a little bit earlier about your orientation period that you don't get to take care of transplant patients for an, a period of time. Is that based on, is that period of time a set time or is that based on skills gained and then you get to take care of those patients? What does that look like? So it's both. So obviously you want to, you know, really get your foundation of nursing skills, right? Because we get nervous just doing the basic things. But um, at UNMH, we actually have a module, um, um, that we can do. It's almost like on Learning Central, almost like we all get those little pamphlets, but it's just a renal transplant um, module that we do. Um, mm -hmm. The hospital does pay for it, but it just really goes into detail about the medications, what to expect, whether it's, you know, physical or psychological, because a lot of the times you know, these patients, um, you know, will come in for a kidney transplant thinking that they're getting, you know, a transplant and they get the call and they're, you know, traveling from you know, I don't know New Mexico too well, but, you know, far north or something. And by the time they get here at four in the morning and two hours later, they find out that they don't actually get the kidney. Mm -hmm. um, so um, dealing stuff with or with stuff like that, all that's like really covered in this detailed module. So until you actually complete that module and pass it, you can't um, deal with kidney transplant patients, especially with the medication because it is a, um, a high risk medication. Wow. OK. Um, a viewer says. Oh, Anna says, um, I'm waiting for transplant. I've been on dialysis for four years now. Can't wait for my day to come. Oh, wow, Anna. That's yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Hope your day comes soon. Um, AV says my husband just donated his kidney last Thursday. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. You just did one of the, one of the first, but I can't remember the term, but where they do like the chain of, um, donations you know so like i donate to mine you donate to so and so and so i can't yeah. remember it was, it was pretty it was a pretty large chain so that was really exciting for you um That's but yeah great. av how is your husband recovering from that it takes a second for those questions or those responses yeah. to come through so we'll move along and she'll respond um yeah. and it's but, actually funny just inter interesting to that the one gal said uh was it four years or something because I had, I had patients where, you know, we're talking, you know, 10 plus years they're waiting. And some people have only been on the list, you know, as low as like it seems like six months to a year. So it's really interesting, you know, because obviously it has to do with like the antibodies and things like that. But um, sure. just how people, you know, it's really just hit and miss. And so sometimes it's just really shocking. So, you know, recent patients, you know, 10 plus years. And yeah, I just I couldn't imagine living that you know, anticipation for something. Yeah. And it's, yeah, like you said, it's just hit or miss based on match, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so her answer was that he's just having a lot of pain right now. He said he's having a lot of pain in his back. Is that yeah. pretty common? Um, back and um, in the front. A lot of, you see a lot of the kidney placements towards the front. Okay. And then a fun little fact, I don't know why I find it so interesting but whenever you get a kidney transplant done, they actually leave the bad kidney in there. So um, usually Whoa. for the most part, yeah, it's really weird because it's it's more um, 
puts them more at risk to take it out. So they just leave it in. And some of them can be as small as, you know, I feel like, you know, a 50 cent piece, it sounds like, to something that's really ginormous and has been um, very inflamed. But uh, yeah, it's interesting because for the most part, I feel like the two years I've been there, I think, I feel like I've always heard patients having three kidneys. And then I had, we had um, a patient come in, he had um, five. He was in for his second kidney transplant. Wow. So this may sound like a dumb question, but <laughs> trust me, I've got them all day. <laughs> okay, good. Perfect. I'll fit right in. Okay. So when there's three kidneys in there, is one of them completely disconnected from the plumbing per se? No, they're just, they're rerouting the plumbing. Okay. So that one's no yeah. longer part yeah, of the filtration. Not, yeah. No, it's not just hanging out in there. Taking up okay. Space. Yeah. okay. No, and I, I remember I recalled that asking that I was like, you know, trying to figure out the tubing, but yeah, they just reroute it. Okay. Perfect. Thanks for clarifying. Okay, yeah. so um, I think you pretty much already answered this, but is there any uh, particular certification for your specialty? Is it just the module or is there something more? Yeah, so you have the module and then um, obviously we always encourage and they encourage on the floor, I should say, your um, PCCN, so your progressive care critical. I mean, that always helps, right, um, professionally. But um, for the most part, though, I mean, like I said, I don't have my PCCN. Um, I've been a nurse, give or take, two years, um, and all I've done is this transplant, and, you know, I, I take care of them, so, yeah. Okay. Um, does your unit ask that you get that at some point, or it's just personal preference? Uh, personal preference. Are you, wait, are you referring to the PCCN? Yeah. Or the, yeah. So that one, it's personal preference. Um, obviously, you can, most companies offer pay raises and stuff like that, but professionally, it's just it's better to have that because it really establishes the email know what you're working on. Sure. Um, Katie asks for clarification. She says, I'm sorry, what is it that they leave in? Oh, they leave in the bad kidney. So the runt kidney, they leave in there and it just leaves out. So. <laughs> okay. Um, let us know if you have more questions on that, Kathy. I think I still called you Katie, sorry about that. Okay, so let's see. What are the top three challenges uh, on your unit and how did you overcome them? Um, challenges. Um, I feel like, and I kind of, I feel like I experienced this today, but everybody kind of does a procedure differently or cares for patients differently. And so, you know, learning from one, one fellow nurse to the other, you know, they'd be like, oh, you did really awesome. And other times it's like, you didn't do this, you did this. And so, um, I feel like that's kind of a challenge with, um, working with our type of patients. And they're very particular. And I noticed too, like with older nurses, um, they started out with one procedure and then when, you know, technology or whatever procedures have changed, they've kind of still kept with that one type of procedure. And so yeah. you notice you're just like, wait, I, I thought that I read this or whatever. And so that's one of my big challenges. Um, just, um, I would say probably going with what I said earlier, because you don't, I don't feel like we get, you know, a ton of transplant patients cause they get spread throughout. Um, so it's just like you're kind of like constantly reminding yourself, you know, it's like, I mean, for us, it's like we can, you know, administer blood all the time, or I shouldn't say all the time, but quite frequently. But it's just like I said, because one of the medications we get is thymo, um, it's like a blood product. And so it's like you get, I don't know if it's just me, it's just like a new nurse, but you get all paranoid and you're like, wait, how do you do it? You know, and it's like, it's almost you're like, you're like, what's a nasal cannula? But it's like, you know, but you're just so nervous. I want to make sure that you do it right. So, um, sure. uh, like maybe that would be a, a second challenge of mine is that you just you know you're you're still pressed for time and you have to be um um conscious of your time making sure you're staying on task but at the same time you're like can i just read that you know that lip and cut <laughs> procedure one more time just to make sure that i know what i'm doing but other than that there's say, nothing wrong with double tricky triple quadruple yeah. checking yourself exactly and especially when it comes to like I was saying that thymo, it's one of the um, medications that we give. And, you know, again, it's like blood. And so it's like you just really need to be careful with that. So don't want to screw it Is that specifically up. given to fresh post-op transplants or is that all transplants? Um, so it's um, post-op fresh transplants usually. Okay. Um, and the other interesting fact um, that I learned um, doing this whole thing is, so I guess thymo used to, they used to get it from horses, like some sort of, um component from it but i guess too many people were getting allergies from it because more people are in contact with horses so now they use thymo that's 
coming from rabbit's blood, I guess. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and so I just, I always find that interesting because it's like, yeah, it's a clear liquid and a giant IV bag and apparently not too many people have allergic reactions to rabbits, so. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess yeah. not many people are encountering rabbits on a frequent basis. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really weird. That's I think that's the, one of the things, too, that I love about transplants. Like, yeah, I just, things like that blow my mind. Just, yeah. You just think unless it, like, you know, personally affect you like the young woman that made the comment you know you just, you just wouldn't know you know yeah for sure um how often do patients reject their transplant um it really depends it depends on i mean i don't have like uh percentages per se but you know it depends on whether the transplant is a live donor like the uh, person's husband or a deceased donor um, sure. But we do tend to get a little bit more rejections from my understanding with deceased donors. Okay. Um, because, you know, they're just going to have issues in general. And it also depends on like, how they care for the kidney too, you know. I mean, I've had patients where they come in for a kidney rejection and they announce that, you know, they, you know, drink shots of alcohol and still drink a lot of beer, you know, and it's like it's not, you know, sure. not a healthy Absolutely. life for the kidney. So something's bound to go wrong. Right. Absolutely. Um, what was they going to ask? I was going to ask another question. Um, something about rejection. Oh, that's what it was. So do you, does your unit only care for those who have um, had the transplant or do you take care of the donor as well? If it's a live donor? I No, we usually don't have the live donor okay. on, our, um, on our floor. Um, it's just primarily the um, the recipient. That's interesting. I wonder yeah. who cares for the donors. Yeah, usually um, probably two. Um, yeah, actually, I don't really think that I <laughs> would know why because I do know that because they do kid transplants too, and the children used to be on our floor, but they moved them over to the pediatric side. Mm -hmm. um, too. So again, for that very reason, I don't know why they would. Um, you know, why they wouldn't keep that specialty together, per se. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I don't – I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's okay. interesting. Anyway. So, too, you know, I'm thinking, like, again, I can't give percentages, but most of them yeah. are deceased-related. So, I mean, I'm imagining that's a good portion of why we don't see a lot of them either. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let's see. I think you already kind of answered this, but maybe you have something to elaborate. elaborate. Um, what has been your biggest challenge? Did you already answer that? The difference in yeah. precepting? Okay. Yeah. And then the next one is best advice for a nursing student interested in pursuing transplant. Um, I mean, really, I would just say, you know, getting your foot in the door. Um, I mean, we do hire uh, residents directly to our floor. So, I mean, it's just a matter of showing interest because um, we do have um, extern or excuse me, interns on our floor, externs. Um, so it's just a matter of um, getting on the, you know, working on the floor. Um, as far as like higher acuity, I mean, I would just imagine just pursuing more of the ICU route. Okay. Yeah. And they, I mean, because we do have um, like the transplant, um, office, you know, where they do like the pre-admission and everything. So, yeah, I mean, we even recommend going down there and job charting because we have, um, a nurse practitioner that works with the team. So just follow him for a day and, um, see if it's something that really piques your interest, interest. And it's always good networking too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, if you were taking a season, talking to a seasoned nurse about why they should transfer to a transplant unit, what are your top three reasons? Top three reasons? Um, are we talking transplant specific? <laughs> no, um, yeah. I, I think it's a really great um, starting point in. Um, I feel like it's nice because, you know, all the patients talk and they're all super friendly and they all have something to share, like their stories and stuff. Um, so it's not like they're in, like I said earlier, like intubated or anything. So you can, I would just really like hearing people's stories, but, um, just the like South in general is a really <laughs> awesome floor. So I really like the people there. So, if, you know, people want to start off there, but, um, yeah, I would say just, it's, it's a good starting point, you know, especially for newer nurses, but, um, older nurses at heart too, I would say, yeah, just. 
it's just a really good floor. I don't, I, I feel like even like the transplant team, I've never had any discrepancies or issues with them. And, you know, they're all very patient because they all know that we're new nurses and they all know that we have to start somewhere. So sure. uh, that being said, I mean, that in itself is a really good reason because we all have to start somewhere. Right. And I know that like the whole, like, was it Annie? It's like, don't eat your young, support your young or whatever, like model that's going around right now. And right. I just, I feel that even from like the higher ups on our floor, you know, it's like, you know, even the transplant doctors, I don't feel like whatever spoken to, you know, spoken down to, it's always what's your take, what are you observing? Because I know that you're spending more time with these patients than we are. So it's definitely a good starting point if you're wanting to get into that higher acuity transplant. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad that your unit is so supportive. Are you getting feedback? I'm hearing myself talk. Oh. I guess I'm not anymore. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. What characteristics do you feel like make a nurse successful in transplant? Um, I would say being able to handle stress um, because sometimes I feel like, you know, like I say, I had two, two transplant patients today. So it's like one's very calm. I mean, she's a rejection patient, but it, there's not like a lot going on. And then there's like, you know, you're really progressing um, more quickly with this other patient. So, you know, when doctors come in and they order blood and then you draw it and send it off and then they add more blood and you're just like, I just, I just was in there drawing blood, you know, so stressful events like that, I would say, um, are really good. And then, um, time management, of course, um, especially because with, you know, like the output of the kidney, you're in there every four hours, that stuff that you have to do yourself. Um, so even though, you know, some people are like, I don't like ICU cause you have to do all your vitals and stuff. Well, even though it's the SAC floor, but with your transplant patients, you have to do your own output. Um, do your um, own like drains, things like that, and really keep on it and make sure that you're very descriptive about um, what, you know, how the patient's behaving. Um, but yeah. Even when they're fresh post-op kidneys, you guys, how often do you check their urine for a fresh post-op kidney? Um, so I want to say it's, oh gosh, now you're putting me on the spot here. I want to say it's, um, no, that's fine. I think it's like two or three days where we have to do urine output. So they have a fully in, they want strict output on the patients. Okay. And because also, because you're running two types of fluids, so usually it's like half normal saline and saline. Sorry to go into detail. So you have like your maintenance IV and then you have replacement. So that's the other thing. So if you have like, you know, 500 output, you need to put yeah. half of that back in. And so just being able to stay on top of that. So, and you're doing that in four hour increments, replacing yeah, hour, 25 yeah, cc's yeah. to one? Yeah. Okay. And that's just to make sure they're staying hydrated and the kidneys are staying functioning, right? Yeah, exactly. And cause you just want to know too, cause you know, when they first start out like that urine's very, very dark, very bloody kind of, and you want to see that progressively change, you know, if you're seeing yeah. a ton of blood clots, things like that. It's nice for you to observe it. Cause when the, you know, Text doing a bunch of things, you know, and they don't think and they don't, you know, they're just like, oh, it's just urine, you know, not downgrading like text or anything, but it's like, no, to them, they don't really, they're not trained to know or um, what to look for, you know? Yeah, that's, that's good to know. I didn't realize that that makes sense on your end. Yeah. Why you would be the one that wants to eyeball all of that. Yeah. Okay, so what does a typical day look like? You mentioned having um, a, a non trans or sorry, a transplant and a rejection. How many patients do you typically have on your unit at a time? Yeah, so on our unit, so we typically have four, four, excuse okay. me, four, <laughs> four. Um, so in my case, I had two, um, but it usually it's, my other two patients were pretty calm, but as far as like transplant, it's, you know, so for them, they both had central lines, so you're doing your own blood draws. Um, mm -hmm. One of the medications we give is Tacro. And so um, we have to do Tacro draws. So it's like you have to time everything out. You want to make sure that you're getting that blood drawn so they have a good Tacro level before you actually give the Tacro. But, you know, then the patient's like wanting their breakfast. And you know, you're just trying to find that like groove of how to um, time it all out perfectly. Um, sure. And then um, they do take a lot of medication. They take a lot because, you know, they're immunosuppressed patients. And so, um, what we always, we kind of joke, um, but we have like boxes that we have. And so we always say we're getting our shopping cart <laughs> for the medications because there's just so many that you have to give them. So I'm really making sure that you're staying up on um, the timeliness of their medication um, is how the day typically starts. And it's just, yeah, it's the matter of keeping up with like your output, keeping up on the medication. You really want to make sure that you're keeping up on if they, um, 
um, add any new blood draws. Um, it's always different for us too. Cause like on our floor, we don't typically do like afternoon blood draws. Mm -hmm. Um, but with kidney patients you do. And so it's just kind of, again, one of those things that you have to get used to with that one special patient that you get. Um, so it's like, you know, two o'clock and two thirty, you're like, Oh my gosh, I totally forgot. So, <laughs> um, keeping up on the random tasks that you have with a kidney mm -hmm. transplant patient. Um, Church. let's see what else. Yeah, and the biggest thing too, and I think it's with nursing care in general too, but you have your four patients, but it's always really important to make sure that they're getting up right away too, if they can, to start walking around. Um, mm -hmm. so, I mean, four patients is hard. I, I'm sure everybody understands it, but yeah, just really making sure that they get up and walk. And so finding that time to get them up and walking and, you know, they've got the Foley and they've got the two maintenance IVs and the tower and you're trying to walk them down the hallway. But um, so that gets a little difficult. Um, but yeah, it's just, I think it's just um, amplified a little bit more compared to like a normal, like, crack patient. Okay. As far as like, like an everyday or how you're asking, like how, how an average day is. Yeah. Sorry, I'm long-winded. <laughs> That's great. I, I love it. Uh, so what's your favorite tip or trick in your specialty? So my favorite tip or trick, so one of them being, so I've been trying to sell everybody on, on my floor, but if there's... I watch users out there. Um, you can actually talk to Siri through your watch, which is really nice. And so like I was mentioning with like my blood draws two o'clock, that's not a task I'm very familiar with or used to. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just talk to my watch, hey Siri, set an alarm for 1400. And then when my phone goes off, you know, it vibrates on my wrist. Um, same thing with like um, checking my urine output every four hours. I just tell her, hey, set an alarm. And I don't have to be specific. It's just nice enough to say, you know, set alarm for fourteen hundred, and I know immediately what it's for. So that's, that's super nice because you're in a patient's room. Um, and then also, um, I use one of my tips and tricks is I actually use an um, Apple. Um, what do you call it? Like translator app. Okay. And okay. It's funny. A lot of people are surprised with it because a lot of our transplant patients come from up north, but in Farmington, and so a lot of them are um, Spanish speaking primarily. Um, and so it's a really handy app. It's not like you don't have to input it. All you have to do is like press your thumb on it, talk into it, and it translate translates it um, very, very accurate from what my Spanish speaking coworkers have told me. Um, and then you can flip it in reverse. I've had patients speak Spanish and turn it and convert it into English. So that's been a lifesaver for me with my transplant patients because there's so much that you have to describe and you want them to know what's going on. You don't want to just you know be pulling blood from their neck or switching out tubes and stuff. And so the things that you really try to let them feel um, as if they're participating um, is the best. So those are my um, tips and tricks for with kidney transplants because I really want to make sure that I'm staying on task. And so, um, but yeah, definitely the iWatch. That always keeps me, you know, people always look at me and I'm just like. What app is that? The translator app. What can oh, you yeah, talk about exact name? It's Converse. Converse. Okay. That's yeah, great. little orange icon, but it is amazing. And time and again, I, I'll get transporters up and, you know, they're picking up a patient and I'm, you know, letting them know. And everybody's like, what app is that? Obviously, we can't use it for legal documents, but it's extremely helpful. Um, like, you would have no idea. It's, it's a really phenomenal app. Like, I couldn't recommend it enough. Well, and I always say that education starts the second that they walk in the door. And yeah. I can imagine that with transplant patients, that's even magnified more so. They yeah. need to know exactly what's going on from the moment they get to your floor until the time they're leaving. So Absolutely. having the ability to educate them continuously is vital, right? Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. And it's good because they do have a lot of that material in um, Spanish so that, you know, they can read it, but it's just a matter of making sure that it's reiterated by somebody that they know here, you know, because again, one of the points to, um, was, you know, because a lot of those dialysis patients, they're very limited on their fluids. And so then it's weird because now, you know, said patient today, so she gets this new kidney. And then now I'm telling her to drink a lot and stay hydrated. And it's just really hard for her to adjust to that because she's always just sipped water, ate ice. And now I'm like, drink, 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 you know, yeah. you know, pushing or we don't have pushing fluids on you anymore. So, um, and just being able to say that over um, the translate. Translator app is really good. Because it also yeah, that's also, amazing. Like, I mean, because we're all taught that, but it's like, I, I want to be like, like, I'm being able to take care of them versus like looking at family member and being like, hey, can you say this? You know, yeah. it just I feel like it gives them a little bit more confidence and sure. taking care of them. 
And they feel like they can actually talk to you as their nurse. That's vital. That's really important. Exactly. So what do you love most about transplant? Um, I mean, really, it's just for me, just because, like I said, being two years in my nursing career, um, I think it's just a great opportunity in general. Um, but my biggest thing I would say would probably be um, just getting to know all the different people from New Mexico because I'm not from here. And so and just hearing their stories, you know, it's like I've had, you know, I feel like it was like a year or so ago, like a lady was waiting for a kidney transplant. She got the call. It had been like her fourth time, you know, and she's like, you know, I, and I felt bad because I asked her, I was like, what is your, you know, what's your feeling like? You know, I just want to know, like, do you get all excited? And she was like, well, it's my fourth time. And, you know, I, I try not to get too excited, but I am excited. And then unfortunately the person they're taking off life support um, to give the, so she could have a kidney actually like survived mm. and, you know, and it, yeah, it's just like a real heartbreaking situation because you're excited for this individual to live, but then this poor lady, you know, has been laying in this bed for two hours thinking she's getting a, a kidney transplant. Um, so it's it's just a real humbling experience too, I think. So you do see them pre-transplant as well while they're waiting for their transplant? Yeah. So usually what will happen is, is so some people, because, you know, again, they're, you know, far off in like the north and or was it east and west north area. Um, yeah. New Mexico, so it takes them a while to get here driving. So, you know, we could get a phone call at 10 and they'll tell us, you know, we have a kidney transplant patient coming in. Um, they should be here about five o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then it's always weird too, because you'll see this patient come up with their bag and you're like, kind of looking at them like, this feels weird. And they're like, you know, I'm Mr. Smith and I'm, I'm getting a kidney today. <laughs> and it's just, it's funny because they're, you know, in their civilian clothing and yeah. And so then they'll, um, they try to get them there like the night before, you know, and then they mm -hmm. just do like the, you know, um, pre-surgery stuff, but yeah, and they got to do a lot of blood work beforehand and stuff. So yeah, we, um, we do get them before they actually get their transplant. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really hard knowing that you've gotten that phone call four different times and four different times you haven't received that kidney. Absolutely. Yeah. And so oh, is your... go ahead. Oh, and just because it's like, you think, cause the amount of time that they spend in these dialysis chairs, you know, it's just like, yeah, that, oh, yeah, I just, I can't even imagine. And sometimes it really doesn't hit them until a couple of days in, even after they get their transplant, I feel like, that they're like, I really don't have to do that, you know, dialysis. Like, it's, it just, it really, you know, yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. Awesome, awesome. That is awesome. Um, so is your unit completely clean, meaning, like, you don't have any... I don't know, pneumonia patients or anything yeah, like so, that. So it was funny that you said that because at first when you asked, do we see um, the donors on our floor? And I was like, oh, well, maybe because infection. And then I thought, actually, no, because we are a single bed unit, that we do get a lot of contact on our floor. You do? Yeah. And so that's the thing that's always surprising, um, you know, because we have a million most patients. Yeah. And they can have contact on one patient and then, you know, be in a immunocompromised patient's room, you know, 10 minutes later. So they don't try to pair you with uh, clean patients with clean patients? No. Nope. No. And I think, too, typically it is mostly, like, um, young children, um, like, cold-wise that way. Um, <laughs> do not allow, and I don't know if it's for every floor uh, unit age, but for us, I think it's either 12 or 14 and younger we can't accept on our floor. Okay. Yeah. And that's really tough, too, when family members, you know, they're bedridden for a day or so, and they just really want to see their family members. And it's just really hard. You know, a lot of people they can't see. Sure. Yeah. That is tough. So what is the hardest part of your job? The hardest part? Um, I think one of the things that I find hard is when you see that patient that gets the transplant and you're so excited, or even like that rejection patient that comes back. And I guess like in both instances, like when they leave, you just – you hope that they're going to leave or like lead a healthy lifestyle. But you know, when people are just kind of set in their ways, um, they don't tend to change. And so when they come back rejected, it's just, it's just, it's really heartbreaking, you know, cause they don't, they don't want to be compliant, you know, and it, there's a lot of, um, and I should have mentioned, there's a lot of pre-education before they get the kidney transplant. So it's not like I randomly call you and say, by the way, you know, there's, they've, they've taken the appropriate steps to be on the list, but, 
um, there is a lot of education. And so it's just, it's really unfortunate, you know, when you have a diabetic patient and they just get a transplant and they're, you know, their family sneaking them in McDonald's. And it's like, there's a reason why we have you on a transplant diet. You know, it's just, it's really unfortunate um, that people don't take care of that, you know, little blessing. Um, yeah. But um, that, and I just, I think the other part is, is just, you know, like you really want to be good at, you know, nursing care. And since transplants are, you know, the very few and far in between, it's like, you know, you're just like, dang it. Like, you know, I'm going to learn from the next time, you know, but um, yeah, just learning from it. Sometimes I'm just like, dang it, I should have known that, you know, or, you know, if my lab draws are an hour late, you know, I'm like, dang it, what, you know, I couldn't have gotten it right, you know, but, you know, live and learn, right? Sure. But I think those are really like only the hardest. And then as we had spoken earlier, like the psychological aspect, like seeing these patients come in and think that they're going to get a kidney transplant and they don't. And, you know, it's not the first or the second time that they've been called, but. Yeah. yeah. That would take an emotional toll for sure. Yeah. And I was going to mention too, kind of going back, um, cause you'd mentioned like reasons to, um, like come do a transplant floor. I was just thinking, cause it's always nice to know that you're a part of a team. You know, it's like we deal with so many like doctors, internal meds and things like that. But it's like it's really nice to know that you're part of a specialized team such as transplant. And it's like you just know that they have your back and you have their back. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. Just, if I need something, it gets taken care of more right away. You know? Yeah, that is great. And with the given experience as such as transplant, is there anywhere else in nursing that you'd like to try since you're relatively new nurse, you may be completely content here, but is there anywhere else you'd like to try? Um, I would eventually like to give my go at ICU again. Um, and then possibly go into like more higher acuity transplant because it is, it is kind of a thrill to think that you get to partake in something so special like that. And that, you know, that they're, yeah, it's just, it's just, it sounds so silly to say it out loud, but you know, that somebody, you're getting somebody else's organ. So that's just like a really thrill, a real thrilling aspect. So I would say, um, you know, give me an ICO shot and possibly work with like higher acuity uh, transplant for sure. And what organs overall, does if you know, does your institution actually transplant? So your floor does kidneys. Is there anything else your institution transplants at this time? Not that I'm aware of. And I feel like that's a little ignorance on my part, just because being a newer nurse, we're like trying to, you know, figure out our jobs and all this other training on the side. But um, yeah. not that I'm aware of, um, I do believe that they were in, I want to say it was like liver or something. Other people might know this, but, um, but then the program never like, you know, took off. So, so yeah. And cause I know there's a lot of like bigger hospitals up on like, Colorado and stuff. Colorado, yeah. Colorado, to the best of my knowledge, does most of those big organ transplants. Yeah. Um, but we're actually, is, from my understanding, like talking to the staff is because the idea is that it doesn't want to um, get as much experience as possible and we don't have, have you know, the area so desperate. There's not a huge population out here, so you can't really meet like that for that. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. So to the best of my knowledge, I we're actually having someone from the donor services team um, in the middle of October sometime. I don't remember the exact date, but uh, we're actually doing a Q&A with her. So I'm really excited to hear her take on how that process goes and everything. It'll be, it'll be good. Yeah, I definitely tune in for that because, you know, having a short experience in ICU is just, yeah. It'd be a really interesting um, place to follow. Yeah. You know, kind of get an idea and like, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Well, um, I don't think, does anyone that's watching have any more questions for Chrissy before she goes to bed since she's been working the last three shifts? <laughs> I don't see any more questions coming in currently, but um, if somebody does ask a question, I'll tag you if I notice, if okay. you don't notice for yourself. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Have a good night. Thanks, you too. All right. Bye, guys.